Okay, okay, this is Nate Newton. One, two, three, this is Nate Newton uh, doing the broadcast. Let me tell you something. My boy Isaiah is not here today, but I got a special person that's sitting in his seat, man. It's my baby brother, Tony Newton, better known as Christopher Antonio Newton. Tony, glad to have you here. I want you to just tell people, give a brief of who you are right now, just who you are. Don't go into no detail, because we're going to have to come back. We're going to have to talk a little cowboys, all right? Okay. So just tell them who you are and what you do at this moment. Hey, uh, Tony Newton, a.k.a. Chris Newton, my government name. Uh, glad to be here in Dallas with you, bro. Uh, I'm in town. I'm actually the uh, director of security, security for the Orlando Magic. Okay, now, that's all we're going to talk about. We're going to come back to my brother, Tony, because we're just going to have a a brother-to-brother conversation. I don't get to see him, but maybe, what, four times a year, five times a year, after living with him for 30 30 years and seeing him every day. uh, uh, But I love him. This is my brother, and if I'm seeming a little nervous, I am, because Isaiah, stand back, usually doing this. My boy Zeus, he usually doing all the introductions and breaking it down. But today... uh, like I said, we got my brother Tony here, but today I want to talk a little bit about them Cowboys. Right on. I think my brother Tony is a Cowboy fan. Is that correct? Big Cowboy fan. Big Cowboy fan. He comes in and he sees maybe one or two games a year, uh, and I, we'd be excited to see him and my wife Michelle all the time. But uh, I just want to talk a little bit about what transpired this past weekend with the Cowboys. Uh, second game, Dak being back. Played the Chicago Bears. He had a pretty good game. I think he had two touchdowns, one interception. A little bad one right before the uh, half. He threw a bad pass, but he came back in the second half once again this game here and had a great game. I think he was 21 for 27 and uh, threw for 250 yards. And like I say, two TDs and an interception. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott missed this game. He sat out, but we had uh, the young Tony Parlett come in with 14 carries. 131 yards. I think we rushed for 200 yards on uh, 29 carries, 6.9 average. And uh, we just had a great uh, game. And what I like to talk about more more importantly is I want to give a few grades, if that's good with you. Now, you know anything about giving out grades? It's A, B, and C. We ain't gonna get no D's and no E's and no F's. I, I don't. You know. I didn't see any D's on the uh, football <laughs> field against in that game the other day. I think the offense they came out. You know, and they, they turned it on. I yeah. mean, the first four possessions, I think, they scored a touchdown. All right, all right. You know, okay. What I saw. And uh, the defense, you know, on those ends, they play lights out. So, I think you got Lawrence on one side and what, Micah? Parson on the other. Parson yeah, yeah. on the other side. And so, that's that's hard to deal with, that, I, that, that Dallas defense. Yeah, it is, man. But we got to sew up the run. We gave up uh, 240 yards rushing. And I tell people, when you – you're going to give up something. But we just brought in a, a, a guy, uh, I can't think of his name right now. We brought him, we traded with uh, the Las Vegas Raiders and brought in, uh, oh, I want to say Hendricks. No, I, I'm not going to try to call his name, but we brought this guy in and uh, it's only one game and he's a big run stopper. And uh, But what we need to do here, man, is sew up our run game during this uh during this bye week, uh, let the coaches come in and self scout and break down things and get things going. But, well, like I said, we're gonna give out a few grades here, and I'm gonna start with the offensive line. And uh, you don't have to so much give a grade as I'm just talking to the fans out there. Uh, offensive line, I want to give them a B. You know, I want to give them a straight up B because doing they are perfect when it comes to run blocking, but we struggle. We have to be just a team that have to just pass block. If we have to go game after game, down after down, just pass block, and I don't think we'll be a very good team. The run is what saves us. Our right tackle, uh, still is solid, great run blocker, average pass blocker. Our right guard, uh, Martin, is a hell of a, a hell of a all pro. He's the best all around player, one of the best all around offensive linemen in the league. Our center. Uh, he's he's about to say he's just an average guy, you know, average run blocker, average uh, Tyler Biot is just an average run blocker, average uh, a pass blocker, but he's an effort guy. He gives you everything he's got. Uh, he's improving in every every area, but I don't think he'll be more than just an average guy. Right. Uh, left guard, 
Uh, Connor McGovern is getting better and better. Uh, I think he's a better run blocker than he is pass blocker. But once again, he's an average guy, you know, who, who gives you everything he got. He studied films real great. Uh, great. Uh, him and Biotis studied film. Uh, just outstanding uh, guys that just work. I love tackle. Young. I'm giving up a few sacks over the last three weeks, but he's learning. Right. A devastating run blocker. Uh, above average pass blocker. He's on our left side, and he can get nothing but better and better and better. Like I say, if I had, if they were just, if we ran the ball 80 times a game, I'd probably have to give him an A. But we do pass, and you're going to have to pass in this league, yeah. so I have to give him a B. Right. You know, and I give him as a, overall, I give him a C plus as a passing unit. Our defensive line, basically the same kind of guys. Great pass rushers, get out to the passer, Run, defend, no. But I'm going to get them a B because they are great, great, great. I mean, you have to give them an A-plus pass rushing. We see all of them got sacks. But when it comes time to stopping that run, you can't give up 120, 130 yards a game at 4.95 uh, uh, five yards a clip. That's not going to be doing anything but getting you knocked out of the first round of the playoffs because teams can dictate to you, and you don't want teams being able to dictate to you when they want to run and pass. You want to dictate to them and make them one-dimensional. So I'm giving our D-line a B. I'm giving our um, linebackers, I'm giving them a C plus. And a lot of that is connected to the front line. They're not keeping guys off our linebackers so they can – so they can run and come downhill and make tackles. Right, right. And neither and none of them are great coverage guys. Nobody but Parsons. Parsons gets a grade all by himself, and I'm like, I'm just gonna grade him last. And uh, I'm trying to speed through this and get through it. So our linebackers, I give a C, C plus. Uh our secondary, I'm getting him an A. Uh sometime Anthony Brown struggle. We've lost uh J. Lou. Uh Lewis to an injury, a foot injury out for the year. Uh, we got a rookie coming up, uh, Ron Bland. I've graded the offensive line. I've graded the defensive line. I've graded the linebackers, and I've graded the, uh, I've graded the secondary. Uh, we got Anthony Brown. Jerron Curse is coming back. It's his second week. He coming from injury. Uh, Donovan Wilson is playing lights out. Uh, this is our this is our oh this is our tone setter. Donovan Wilson is kind of like uh, Mike on the front end at being a, a tone setter. Tree, uh, Trevon uh, Diggs, you know, uh, top, one of the top interceptors. He uh, covers all the number one receivers that we face for a certain amount of time. Uh, the Ron Bland is the guy that took uh, J. Lou uh, place, man. Uh, Kelvin Joseph, second round pick a year ago, he's still a bit question mark. Uh, he gave up a touchdown yesterday, which that happens. Right. Uh, so, but these guys are playing well, okay. and, I, and I'm giving them an A. They they've been doing what they had to do. They don't. They, we don't give up a lot. We still a top. Uh, 10 defense, and mainly because our back end plays well uh, and uh, with our front end. So, But I get a whole defense, man. I give them an A because uh, they have been the band-aid for our whole team. When Dak was out, they took over and won literally four games along with the quarterback, so along with the backup quarterback. So I I'm going to give them an A. Uh, and I'm going to jump back over to the offense. Our, our wide receivers, I got to get them a C plus. Uh, even though I believe C C D Lamb is gonna find his way as a number one, and I don't like to put numbers on guys. I like to just let the production speak for themselves. He's been too inconsistent. We need for him to come up. Uh, let, uh, this past game, he had uh, five catches, seventy some yards, one TD. We need for that to be every game. Right. We don't need for you to have two catches one game for 40 yards and, and no TDs. We need for you to have a TD or 100 yards every game because everything spins off of that number one receiver. So we need for him to pick his game up. We need for Noah Brown to get healthy. Uh, Noah Brown was our guy. You know, um, he's been missed consistent out of all the guys, but he got hurt to pass uh, the game before this one right here uh, against Detroit. So – we lost him, and he didn't play this past game. So uh, we need him to pick it up. 
And Michael Gallup, I cannot judge him because he coming off a, a bad hurt. injury. Right. And uh, But he had a good game this past game. I think he had uh, three or four catches for maybe 60, 70 yards. So he's doing well. And I'm putting the wide receivers and the tight ends together. Dalton Schultz, Jason Ferguson, uh, Hendershot. These guys have been playing well, especially – when for uh when when my man uh, Dalton went out, two rookies Ferguson and Hendershot played well. Right, I'm giving them a B a B plus because they're young, with mix, mixed with experience with uh with my man uh Dalton. Yeah, they blocking better. Right, they are blocking much better, and I think with the competition of. J- uh, of Jason Ferguson and Hendershot, these two young guys, they know they were our blocking tight ends. But when Dalton got hurt in the first few games, these guys came in with not only blocking, but they was catching the ball. So that means when Schultz got back, he had to pick his game up. Right. So they 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 got a B plus, a B or B plus, either one because these they, they work well as a tandem. They're not great blockers, but they're getting there and they're fight. So I'm giving them a B plus. Receivers a C, C minus, uh, tight ends. Even though I'm putting them with them, B B plus. Uh, running backs, special, special. Zeke is a all around guy, third down guy, a short yardage guy, hard nose, set the tone guy. I'm gonna always give him an A. I mean, he's a, been a starter for seven years. No, he can't make the the big runs like Tony. But uh, he does what he needs to do to set the, uh, the tone for our offense. He's the physical hammer. He's the meat tenderizer. Tony, Mr. Explosive. Tony Pollard has done a great job. His blocking has gotten better on third downs. This guy can take it to the house. He can run between the tackles. He can run outside the tackles. And I like how they're using him now. Coach Kellum inside and outside. He catching the ball, coming out sure. of the backfield. He doing everything as as we saw the last game, man. What a hundred and thirty one yards on fourteen carries, man. He he was cooking. He's a beast. And then our other guy, uh, Malik Davis, young rookie, he came in and, and did a, a, a nice job. Uh, so I'm I'm giving them an A, but I'm also now is the top position, quarterback. Cooper Rush, you get a B B plus. For, handling, for hanging in there after for four or five games after Dak was gone. Right. We, bro, did you have them winning anything? Uh, to be honest, when Dak went down, right. I thought the Cowboys season was going to be, it was you know, yes. going to be playing 500 football at this point. Right. Uh, if so, that. If that, yeah. Right, right. So he held on the fort along with the defense, and they did a nice job. Right. Now Dak is back, and you see where Dak at last two games where he's getting better and better. So I'm going to get Cooper Rush, what I said, a B. B. I'm going to get Dak a B. Come back, only one, uh, two games, only one interception. He tried to force a few to first one, but he's, he's accepted the fact that we're not that high-flying offense. We are run-first uh, offense. And we cater to the defense. So a lot of what we do now is about our defense, trying to save them. So I'm going to give him a B, too. Uh, and that's how I feel about that. Special teams, I'm giving an A. They have not hurt us. All I ever ask for my special team, don't hurt us. And now with uh, with uh, Cavante Turpin, uh, averaging uh, got to be averaging about 15 16 yards of punt return. Now, it's maybe less than that, but he's so excited. All you remember is the big plays. They're getting him more involved on the offense. Uh, he does great on the kickoff return and the punt return. So, I'm giving him an A, maybe an A plus, because he changed the way we do things and how we feel about the special teams. Now, coaching staff. <laughs> and I do them all this once because I judge it all in off the head, coach. Coach uh, Mike McCarthy's done a hell of a job in delegating, delegating his authority. He let Coach Dan Quinn be himself, and he let Coach Kellen Moore be himself to a certain extent. Right. And what I mean by that is you've seen where 
coach is, is tampered down, Coach Kellum, because Coach Kellum loved to throw. He'll tell you in his heart, I'm a quarterback. I want to throw. Right. So now at certain points in the game, you can tell that Coach McCarthy said, hey, I think we ought to run here. Uh, let's don't put ourselves in a bad position. You can see his, his hands on the offense. So he's done a great job. Our offensive line coach has done a great job. Coach Fieldman, I was hot at him at the beginning. Coach Fieldman has done a great job in, in getting the five guys and letting them stay where they're at. The defensive line coach, Leon letting those guys are doing a great job. Linebacker coaches, they they doing what they can do uh, because I think we're limited at linebacker. If, if Parsons is not a part of that group, we're limited. Uh, Barr is okay. He's a veteran guy with a veteran presence. Uh, uh, the, the Wolf Hollow, um, Leighton Van Der Esch, he's okay. Uh, first round pick several years ago, hurt his neck, so he hasn't been the same. And uh, we just making it. We got a few guys, a few young guys that are, are, are coming up. Damon Clark, uh, we need more from Luke Gifford, uh, but he's a special teams guy. Uh, I uh, can't think of my other guy name. Let me let me find him. Linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. Good one, good one. Linebacker, Dante Clark, Luke Gifford, Jabril Cox. He got hurt last year, and he's coming back off of injury. So we got to get these young guys going, and then we should be all right. I'm giving the team all together with all these Bs, Cs, and I don't give out Ds and Fs. So uh, I'm giving the team a B as a whole because uh, – Nobody could have told me that the Cowboys would be sitting there, what, six and two? Six and two. And it, and last night, the Giants lost. So that means we in second place, and the Eagles still the only undefeated team. They're playing lights out right now. Now, I've given you my thoughts here, and I've given you my overall thoughts of what I think this team could be. And then when, when next week when me and Isaiah come back, we'll get a little bit more deep into it. And y'all know by then I've been on change my mind because Isaiah ain't a Cowboy fan. And so I have my grades much higher, you know, over-exaggerating. But that's just my thoughts on the Cowboys. But, but, but my main goal was to get my baby brother in here. You know, I got uh, three brothers. He's my favorite baby brother, all right? I got th two other brothers I got to put in their place, and they their favorites in their own place. But, Tony, glad to have you here. Let me tell you something, bro. I love you. Love you too, bro. Love you how you, how you handle yourself as a man. Now I need from you to go from whatever age you want to <laughs> go to, what you remember, and what you want to tell the people, man. This is my baby brother, Tony Newton. Been a, I want to say this before we start. How many years, Orlando, police officer? 20, 25 years. 25 years. He went through a lot of things to get where he got. So, Tony, the floor is yours, man. You can look into the camera. You can okay. look at me. But All let right. me tell you something. I got a sweet brother sitting right in front of me. Right on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, well, first of all, since this is Cowboy Nation, I just want to – I'll give a quick grade. I want to say something real quick right. about this past weekend. I don't know all the players and the coaches and all the mm -hmm. names, but I do know this weekend – they went against a great run offense. Yes. You know, those right. guys, they run downhill, those running backs from Chicago. And mm -hmm. that offensive line, they they do their thing. And to do what they did and put up 49 points on a team mm. that came off a big win. I think they, they had a big win last week yes. in Chicago. Yes. So they came in confident. They, they were hot. And, and Dallas – uh, just you talked about all the positions, the offense, defense, coaches, special teams. I would give that grade. I would give them a grade of a since they're not number one in the division and number two. I'm gonna give them a B plus overall. Okay, okay, I like that. I like that. You know That's, cowboy. I mean? That's cowboy. That's <laughs> cowboy. Because yes. and that it, guy I was trying to mention was Jonathan Hankins. We got that trade from. Right, right. Yes, and I think our run game would be better, man. But go ahead on. Yeah, go ahead but on. just just to speak on the Cowboys, I'm a I'm, I'm a Cowboy man since since I can. Remember, star back, and then when right. you went there, that was just icing on the cake. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But to me, I'm just a young fella, youngest of five. Nate Newton happens to be my big brother, who I'm very proud of. We're proud of each other. Our, all my brothers and my sister, we're proud of each other, of our comp accomplishments and what we've done. Um, started out, uh, I just go right to my uh, to my work career. I started out in corrections, actually. Yeah. I was a CO for Orange County Corrections uh, right after leaving school in uh, 1988, uh, college down there in Tampa. And um, 
started in corrections, uh, wanted to do more. Right. Once one of my buddies uh, decided to cross over and go into, uh, you know, being a police officer. So I decided to go to a crossover. Right. And got my uh, got my uh, training for that and was a deputy reserve from 91 to 94, working in corrections from up until 94 also. And leaving there, I went full-time with the Orlando Police Department. Uh, that's the route I decided to take, which was a great a- agency. Uh, I know it was a lot of good camaraderie there with the officers. And just, you know, me, I've always wanted to serve and protect. Right, right. You know, that was, that was my thing. I, li- I, I like helping people. Yes. Give and me some of the things you did within that. Oh, Those man, years, I, man. I, had, I had a great career, man. I, I started out in patrol, as most officers do. And, you know, it's kind of it was kind of weird doing it in Orlando, being from Orlando, because a lot of time you come in contact with people that you know, people right. you go to school with, people you're friends with. But the, the thing that took me to the next level was that even though you come in contact with them, you still respect people. You respect right. them. And, uh, you know, everybody's just a a phone call away from being on the other side. You know, right. you got to look at it like that. It, it, you could, it could be you. Mm. So just, I think me respecting people and even though they're at the lowest time in their lives, if I'm dealing with them at a law enforcement level, you know, that was the toughest part for me. Now, as far as my career there in patrol, I worked in the uh, criminal investigations division. Mm. I worked in the... Um, well, so I was on a FBI task force. Yeah, I remember that, man. You yeah, could, you could be anywhere in the state at any time, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, what man? What a what a great career! And it was it was working with uh, human trafficking and that type thing when let, I was with the task force. Let me ask you about that, man. Did you ever come firsthand with that type of stuff with the human trafficking? Did you ever? We, we did. I mean, what is and basically what it is? It's just it's just uh basically quote unquote pimping at another level. Right. Basically, when you're dealing, wow. but but what they're doing, a lot of those traffickers, they exploit kids, these young young girls that are, you know, underage. They they could be ten and up. You know, it, it doesn't matter to a trafficker. Right. They just want to exploit them and make money off of them. Wow. And that was our that was our target, uh, with any woman. But they they would start young. Yes. You know, at least right. back when I guess when pimping back in the I guess seventies was yeah. real solid. At least it was adult women. Now you're talking right. kids they used to deal with. Right. So uh, you know, in doing that, uh what else did I work? I worked uh I actually worked for a commissioner in Orlando. Yeah. Uh I was her aide, one of our city commissioners. So I mean, I worked in professional standards. You right. know, what so is what is that consistent? basically that's dealing with discipline of officers. Okay. Basically, the ones that violate policy and procedures. So I did that. How was that man to to be able to work with your guys and then say guys and girls? And all of a sudden, we need to talk to you. Did they look at y'all crazy? Just like it was on TV, and they'd be like, "Oh man, you 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 the police or the police?" It, it's it's a little tough because you know it is that uh it is that uh that quote unquote the bond with the officers and right. but you know I I always believe in being firm and fair. And if we find out if it's proven that you've done something wrong right. or out of line, right. you're punished for it. If you violate policy and procedure, you're punished for it. If you Ooh. didn't, you know, right. we'll deal with that. Right, but, right. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you weren't the most popular walk around the agency <laughs> when you do that. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So it's, uh, but it, it was fun. You, uh, my, you know, even with, like I said, as long as you treat people fair, you're not you're not witch hunting, right? Right. When you're doing that type type job, you're just going after the facts. I've always called myself and being an investigator a fact finder. I'm not making up stuff. I'm not pulling stuff from anywhere. If it, if the facts are there, I'm gonna follow the facts, and that that has taken me to the next level. And you know, one of the positions that I held there for the longest, I was a homicide detective for like 12 years. So I've seen, if you want to say everything, mm-hmm. I've seen everything. Wow. When it comes to that. And wow. I, I had a passion for it. I enjoyed it. I, I I enjoyed putting violent criminals, murderers in jail. Period. I, I remember you used, I used to call you sometime and no matter sometimes I used to try to catch you off guard, you'd be like, Yo, I can't talk to you right now. We investigating this. Right. And you be beating the streets, man. I gotta find somebody. Somebody saw this. 
mean, oh, yeah. man, you used to be intense about yeah. I, about all that. That was you used to be intense about. I get back with you, you know. But yeah. it's, man, it's, can it's, that consume you though to, uh, to the point where you just don't have time for nothing? Uh, uh, I tell you what, man, I, I, I think back to this one case. We had one of our, my own brothers, one of our officers was killed. He was at the ATM. And some young fellas walked up on him and basically shot and killed him while he was at the ATM. But he happened to be an off-duty police officer. And um, that case kind of hit home with us because, mm. you know, when you know somebody like that personally. Right. And I remember that incident happening on a Friday, Friday evening. And when I tell you, we end up arresting the person who's responsible. But when I tell you, we didn't go, I didn't go to sleep until Sunday. Wow. Just grinding. I mean, that was some serious first 48 going on. Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? real. Where you, you get, you just get a lead, get a lead. You don't stop. You don't stop until you have. I remember sitting in the interview room with the suspect, basically dozing off going to sleep almost. Right. That's wow. how, that's how, you know. Just when you finally got that person. Right, right. Wow. But uh, that all turned out okay, and, you know, it was, it was a great career. Now, as far as being a police officer, I love doing what I do. I love serving the citizens of Orlando, and uh, it was great. I wouldn't want to go back and do it. I do miss all my uh, coworkers. I miss the camaraderie with the officers and my friends that I developed there and had there before I even started there. So as far as that... That that was that. Let, let me say this here, because you know me and Zell, we get gritty sometimes. We we ask questions that are tough. You know, when people said when the racial issues that's always surrounding us, whether you're a cop or somebody of authority, racial issues are always surrounding us. And a lot of people I used to try to the, the a lot of things this is one thing that did not resonate with Nate Newton. When people say, don't fund the police, you, my brother, my best friend, Tony Hayes, are police officers. Right. I'm like, what you mean, don't fund the police? When you are dealing with racial issues and within your own program, within uh, when you hear people say that, man, tell me, as a black officer and watching the white counterparts of people of other race that are police officers, tell me what is what 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 is that like living in the same workforce, man? Okay. Well, I can tell you that I work with a lot of most of my partners were white. Right. I work with black partners. And I can tell you that me, the type of person and officer I was, I would not stand for injustice. Right. If I saw another officer doing something wrong out of line. Right. I'm going to put a stop to it. Right. I'm not going to sit back and just let it happen. I'm not going right. to be complicit and let that happen. You start talking about defunding the police. <laughs> when you defund the police, basically uh, that's, that's, that's hurting basically the lower income. I'm, I'm not going to just say black, but right. the lower income, because that's who's basically calling the police. That's right. That's right. You know, and that's who you, that's who is hurting in the long run. And you talk about the officers that are, that are that are doing these bad things or wrong things. I don't believe in in these good apples, bad apple stuff. But if you got a person that's that's uh, that's doing something out of line and wrong, mm. just fire them. Right, right. You know, get rid of them. You, right. you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, the, and and if you see something like the incident in Minnesota, you know, somebody, one of that guy's friends or one of those officers should have stepped in and said, "Hey, I got him. I got this." Right. That type thing. Right. Don't just sit back and let, you know, because millions of people watch that guy lay yeah. there and die. Right, right, right. On you know, and that was that was tough to watch. That was tough for me to watch. It was right. tough for officers to watch all over the country. Yes, you know, and I think being law enforcement, we're the it's one of the only occupations that when one does something wrong, it's as if everybody's doing things wrong. Wow, and it's, and it's not like that. Yeah, yeah. There are some great police officers out there that love to do what they do and love looking out for their community and taking care of the community and making the community safe. That's what it's all about. And, again, I'll say again, if you have somebody that's not doing that, they out of line, they doing stuff illegal, right. they need to be dealt with, right, period. Right, right. So, and and I, I try to tell people, you know, uh, a lot of times the line for me is, is gray, 
because when I see things, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hyper, you know, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, 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 I'm saying things. Then I'm like, wow, did I just present the, the best solution to this problem? Because men are supposed to be problem solvers, right. not not hell raisers or bringing up, you know, or, or trying to grind things to the ground. So I'm glad you covered that, man. And uh, and I and I always try to tell people like this right here, you know. Uh, we as Christians, we ain't allowed to hate, but we do see wrong, and, and it is a justice either now or in the forever after. So you're going to have to deal with it regardless. Uh, but I, I do believe this, and, I, and I'm, I'm looking you in your face. <laughs> the, what? Don't fund the police? Like like he's, this young man just said, you, you, you're not hurting. You may not be hurting the rich or the higher up, but the, the middle class to low Yes, sir. That's who. That's who is going to be hurt, because those are the people with the most issues. And uh, I, I'm not digging that. Don't don't you know? So don't walk up to Nate talking about defund defund the police, because you talking about my friends, my relatives. I mean, we got a lot of them in the family that yeah. works in correction. You no nah, man, nah. Don't defund because you 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 get a you you make people have a don't care attitude. And you don't want the people that when you somebody knock on your door and say the police they ain't all, they ain't always coming to get you, they ain't you know and and uh, my friend my brother we gonna get we gonna get off of that I'm finna get emotion we gonna get <laughs> off of that but uh, Tony tell us a little bit about your kids man tell us a little bit about your beautiful wife Miss Tabitha. You know how you met her. If you if you want to share that, let's and, let's, let's go and, let's go back memory lane. Yeah, I tell you, man, high yeah. school high school sweetheart, man. Yeah, that's, I that's, remember that. I'm like, no, he did something I couldn't do. Hold on to high school that, sweetheart. That's my baby, man. We met back in what 1983. Wow. Yeah, and uh, we dated. You know, I went out to school. She she did her school, and next thing I know, in between school, uh, my oldest daughter came in there somewhere. You right, know right, I mean? right, right, right. Give us a which name, is, don't you? Which is Aquasia. That's my yeah. oldest daughter. And um, after that, I, that's when I moved, actually moved back to Orlando and mm. said I need to get a job because it's a baby now. Right. And uh, we got married in 1994, been married ever since. And uh, actually, 1993, I take that back. Right. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, which is Alexis, was born in 19. Uh, 1994. Well, you can remember that. I can't remember none of that. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember none of that. I got all girls. Girls rule my world, man, yeah. right now. But I do have a young man now. But right. anyway, we'll get to him. Right. And uh, my oldest uh, actually has twins. They were born in 2007, uh, Taylor and Talia. Yeah. Which you're familiar with. Salt and pepper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're my little, my little queens. And since that time, my oldest... Uh, actually just had a little boy, Taj, right, right. which is the first young man that's on, that's in my right, lineage. lineage. Right, yes, yes. right. And uh, he's a he's a bundle of joy. He's one years old now, and he's Papa's little boy, and, right. you know, Good, that type right. thing. So, hey, everybody uh, everybody on my end, they're, they're doing well, and, you know, I uh, you know how we are about family. I love my family. I love my wife and kids and grandkids. And so. and, and, and and we and we go to this little town called Lottie where our mother, Margaret Louise Newton, was born. Right. You know, and we go to and we go to this place, man, every year, two, three times a year. He probably go probably six times a year. I probably go about four times a year. And um, we had this big family reunion. We meet there. We do firecrackers. We, do, I mean, we what? said it well, all. Well, you know what? It's not even called a reunion yeah. anymore. It's called a gathering. It's called we a just, gathering, we bro. Just, we just get together with families. Yes. Yeah. Families. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? And this is the thing about our family is white, black, Hispanic, it don't matter. Yes, sir. Yes, you show sir. up at you show up at the, at the Johnson Krug family gathering. It's for real. You see us all, man. We mix. Yeah. Good Christians. Yeah. Doing a good doing a great thing. It's a two day event, but this year I'm gonna tell you I don't eat all the ribs before we get out of church. <laughs> I can't have that this year. So right. I'm about to talk to Brent. I'm about right. to put a little extra money in for Brent. Right. Yeah, man. But uh, 
Tony, man, it's been nice talking to you. Is there any yeah. other thing you want to get off your chest, man? I mean, your, oh, your, man. your, your Orlando Magics. Uh, oh, man, I tell you, yeah. And, you know, now since I retired from the police department, I got this awesome job with the uh, Orlando Magic organization. And I tell you, I couldn't be working for a better ownership. Yes. You know, the DeVos family who have been just so... Can you repeat that? The DeVos family. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're better than the Jones family, but <laughs> I work for the best. But, but go ahead. I ain't going to No, that. man. I, I, I tell you, they, they have, since they've owned the team back in, uh, I want to say back in 1989, okay. they have given back to the community mm-hmm. millions of dollars. Right, right. And I tell you, it's, it's just a great organization from top to bottom. And I'm just glad they had the faith in me. Our president and GM that hired me to be in the position I am. I'm the director of security for the team now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we have a young team. Uh, we have some, uh, you know, we have a young coach even now. That, wow, that's right. Jamal that's Mosley, right. Who, who did some coaching out here in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And, and had a good relationship with Luca. I saw him chopping it up last night at our game. Luca! Yeah. Yes. So, so even though he put up like 50 on us, but, you know, we... <laughs> <laughs> we we do have a young team that's going we're going to be great. We got a lot of injuries going on right now, but we we're going to be a we're going to be a good team. I mean, we're going to be hard to deal with. Uh, Let me tell you all something. My brother said they're going to be hard to deal with. <laughs> yeah. So how far away are y'all? Y'all middle of this year you can start seeing that progress. Next year y'all can just light it up. How far away well, you think y'all are from we're, being we're, who we're, you need them to right, be? We're right there this year. It's just a matter of getting the the uh, our injured or hurt players back on the floor. You know, we just, you know, last night we we started a lineup with right. the, the the smallest guy on the court. Our starting lineup was six ten, so we yeah. got we got centers and power forwards playing point guard. You right. Know, and now y'all remember ball. now, this is show. This is, we, <laughs> we 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 a few days early, so in basketball have a lot of games. So a lot of games gonna be on play, but you go back and pull it up when they played Orlando Magic and watch that game because but because. Basket, it ain't like football. It's a week to week thing with right, football. Right. But basketball, what y'all, what y'all got a lot of games, what yeah, two, three I mean, games we, a week. We, we early on, man. We only what eight games in. It's right, eight, it's eighty two games. Yeah, it's a, it's a heck of a grind. So man. how many of y'all play a week on average? Two. It may be we have back to backs, so at least sometimes three, three wow. or four. Yeah, in wow. a week. So it's a, it's it's a grind uh, in in the NBA. I yes. mean, I pr- power to them. And a lot of these. Young guys, I mean, we got a phenom, Paulo. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you coming from college playing, what, average 30 games, you go to the tournament, what, 34, 35, right. and then you step into the NBA and you're playing 82 games? Mm-hmm. Wow. Man, that's, that's, that's something else to deal with. Wow. So, but, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great organization. And, and when we get, like I said, when we get our, uh, our young guys, our injured players, like on the floor, and we get everybody in that chemistry comes together. You'll 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 see something about the uh, magic. Wow, I'm gonna tell y'all something. You know, uh, this is so unique about my family. Is I had a brother that played in the NFL with me, Tim Tim Newton. I have a brother that's head of directory for uh, the Orlando Magics. I got a brother that uh, works with NASA. He's head of uh, HR. He's My sister, also, she yeah. works back in with a company that uh, kind of sells things to other companies. I can't get the name. And Sheila, I'm sorry. I know you get mad at me, but I can't think of your. But my family works. Yeah. Uh, we show our kids work Work is the way. Do you know, you want some, you, you work, you save, you sacrifice. Take care of your family, your loved ones, your kids, your daughters, your sons, you know, and uh, I'm proud of my family. You know, I don't use the word proud a lot because that's the first thing that's taken away from you and you fall off of pride. But my pride is through the love of Christ. So it's a different pride. And uh, but man, I, I wish my boy Isaiah stand back was here because he could put this thing in the right order. I jump around, you know, I, and that's why I brought stand back in. But man. Let me tell you something, bro. Thank you for coming up in here. Thank you for doing what you did. It's early in the morning, y'all. It's it's six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. So he got up early because he got to get back over there and handle his business because his job is the players first, foremost. And so I thank him for uh, for getting up, man. I thank man, you for man. being a part of. Let me tell you something. For Isaiah Standback, Nate Newton, 
Tony Newton. Hey, you got anything you want to say? Hey, thank you. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you. We gone, y'all. Ta-ta.